Hey guys, I've got a 2002 Chevy Trailblazer here, and I'm gonna use this truck to point out to you the three important fuses for the operation of the brake lights. I'm also gonna show you how to change your brake light switch. But to start with, let's look at the fuses, because this is what you'll wanna check first anyways, before you start replacing parts. Heading under the hood, there is a 25 amp fuse here. Uh, you're gonna get to it by removing this cover, which you do by pushing in on the tab on the left and the right side while you pull up. This 25 amp fuse is called the stop lamp fuse and it's gonna be this one right here. So pull it out. As you can see, this one is intact. If you find that yours is blown, you can use this fuse here as a spare. This provides constant power to your stop lamp switch on a yellow wire. Now when your stop lamp switch is pushed in, when you hit the brakes, it will take the power from that yellow wire and send it to two other fuses through a white wire. And those two other fuses are gonna be underneath this seat here. You pull up on the tab here, there's gonna be a fuse cover. You can see there's a tab right there. I like to just grab this whole thing and pull it to me and the box will flex and kind of free up. I can move it out of the way. There's another cover here, which again, there's tabs on either side. You push in and lift up. Now, the two fuses are going to be this 10 amp fuse and that 15 amp fuse. This 10 amp fuse feeds the third brake light, while this 15 amp fuse, among other things, feeds the brake lights on the left and the right side. And again, uh, there are spare fuses here at the top. These are all spares that you can use. So uh, one way you can test the switch before you go to replace it, you can use the exposed contacts on the fuses to see if they're receiving power when someone else is pushing the brake pedal down. So uh, those are the three fuses. Now let's move on to look at replacing the switch itself. Let's assume that you've checked the fuses. All of the fuses are in great shape. So we're gonna pop down here there is a cover here that you're gonna have to remove first. And I went ahead and took the liberty of pre-loosening these screws. There's a screw on the left and a screw on the right. I really don't know what size they are because I just use my pliers to loosen them, but they're probably like a seven millimeter screw. And this cover in the back is not retained by any screws. It's instead retained by a piece there that goes into a slot on the back of the firewall. And there's another on the left, on the right hand side, another slotted piece. And there's gonna be a bunch of wires here connecting various things like the bulbs. Uh, there's like a little module there. So you'll want to carefully disconnect all that stuff. I'm just gonna kind of rip it out here. So yeah, got all that stuff carefully disconnected. That is going to expose your brake light switch. This piece right here. Let me maneuver the camera so you can get a better look at it. And you may have noticed there is a clip on the right hand side. The clip is what retains it. So this is the clip here. You're gonna have to remove that. It slides off. Uh, let me see if I can do this with one hand. always a challenge one-handed repairs it's very similar to other brake light switches you know if you've done one you've done them all for the most part but generally you pry in there with like a flathead screwdriver and you can see the clip just flew off now you can see how it works there's like two circles that overlap and one of the circles is bigger than the other now with that clip off, you can grab the, uh, the lever, the little push rod that comes out of the brake booster, and you can move it to the right. Sometimes you have to wiggle the brakes around, the brake pedal, but it will come out. There we go. And here's the switch. And you'll note the switch is slotted on one side. So if you're clever enough, you actually don't have to take the push rod all the way off. 
you can have the push rod just uh, slightly off, just enough for one side of the switch to become free. And there's your connector right here. Again, you'll want to uh, push on this piece with the flat head and disconnect it. There's the, uh, the yellow and the white wires. Uh, one of the white wires goes to the third brake light fuse, the other one goes to the other fuses there. And uh, when you have your new part, oh, and you'll want to, as always, inspect the contacts, make sure that none of the contacts are burnt out. It is a lot of power going through this switch, so sometimes if the connection is bad, it can cause the, uh, the pins to uh, burn up. But these pins look great. So we've got it connected here, and again, I'm going to maneuver the push rod to be just barely on the, uh, the lever, and then you can kind of slide this down over it. Basically, the push rod sits in between the two plastic bits on the uh, connector. There we go. Sorry, I know I shifted the camera away at that crucial moment, but I've got it clicked back on. And very important, do not forget this clip. Uh, clip is very, very uh, necessary. And there's a little slot on the brake lever that the clip engages with. You've got to push it on there hard enough. And it takes a fair amount of force, which is why I'm having difficulty doing it one-handed. But you guys get the idea. There we go. Got it clipped on there. So yeah. I hope this info was helpful for you guys. Please be sure to let me know if you have any questions about the brake lights on your Trailblazer. Or more importantly, let me know if you have any advice for troubleshooting the brakes on this thing. And thank you for watching.